So a COTS regression model, I'd say, is not incredibly commonplace in HCA submissions. Um, there isn't usually a fantastic precedent out there, but it's a very intuitive uh, and interesting approach to consider. Um, from my personal experience, uh, for a previous submission, I worked uh, on a model which incorporated a COTS regression approach, and it was very useful um, and logical, I'd say, in incorporating uh, events uh, in the specific indication. Uh, so, for example, um, if we're talking about, say, a, a cardiovascular uh, indication where you've got significant amount of cardiovascular events which should be incorporated, the COTS regression approach would allow you to um, incorporate the different events and use them to estimate uh, the likelihood of a specific event. So, for example, death, uh, the likelihood of that uh, occurring. So with those cardiovascular outcomes, um, an example, if we take heart failure, what the COPS regression approach does is it takes a series of covariates, um, so in a regression sort of form of equation, um, and uses it to estimate the likelihood of a, car of a heart failure uh, event occurring. In the example that I've used, uh, we use this for several events. So we worked out, for example, heart failure uh, and uh, cardiovascular rate of mortality we were able to work out the likelihood of each event occurring. Um, and then what we we're able to do is estimate uh, the cumulative hazard, um, the hazard being the likelihood of an event uh, in an intervention group relative to the comparator. And using that, we were able to estimate transitions for patients over time. Um, we we're able to estimate the proportion of patients dying because we we're able to work out, OK, what are the impacts of the individual covariates or uh, so, for example, age uh, or demographic or smoker status, for example? What's the impact of those different factors on the likelihood of an event, so death taking place? We could then incorporate that into a model uh, sort of matrix uh, format uh, to estimate, OK, what the uh, number of patients dying at each uh, stage were. We we're also able to incorporate the different events, so the likelihood of a patient having um, heart failure, for example, and we're able to identify costs for that um, and we're able to model, OK, so how many patients are experiencing a number of events? Um, can we assign a cost to that, a utility to that? And it allowed a reflective uh, modelling uh, process to be undertaken uh, for that specific indication, looking at cardiovascular outcomes. There's various strengths to the modelling approach, uh, so it allows you to look at the association between the survival time of patients and one or more predictive variables to assess, OK, what's the likelihood, what happens if we increase the likelihood of one variable having, what impact will that have on survival? It allows the incorporation of patients that are yet to experience an event. Uh, we're able to simulate basically uh, what um, the impact of each very varying each covariate would be on the likelihood of survival. Uh, and use that to incorporate uh, future patients, the expectation of what would happen to them uh, on the likelihood of them receiving an event. There are a couple of limitations. Uh, so it doesn't incorporate the changes in risk over time. So with the hazard rate, we assume, or the hazard ratio, we assume that patients uh, experience an event with a uh, fixed likelihood in an intervention group relative to a comparator. An example being a hazard ratio of 1.5 would assume a 50% uh, increase in the likelihood of an event uh, in the intervention arm relative to the comparator. This won't change over time in the model. Um, the assumption of proportional hazards is often not realistic. So proportional hazards looks at the hazard rates, the likelihood of an event uh, between an intervention and a control group. Um, and it assumes that it remains proportional over time. Um, often the hazard rates of the likelihood of an event occurring can uh, vary uh, in an intervention group, say relative to a control arm. Um, and this uh, assumption isn't uh, particularly realistic always with the cost regression approach.